Here at the Pyramid Pass Trailhead begins my 14-day solo fishing and backpacking trip into the Bob Marshall Wilderness. Here is the horse I'm going to ride. It looked harmless enough, but it soon would be giving me the horse ride from hell. Do you see how far away my horse is from the rest of the group? It insisted on walking 30% slower than the other horses. Once it got a certain distance behind, it would then panic and start galloping to catch up. When this happens, we need to hold on tight with both arms so you don't fall off and get hurt. But I had to use one hand to hold on to my camera, so I couldn't get the proper leverage and had to hold on extra hard. After my arms got worn out, I tried to hold on tight to the camping horse with my legs, but then they too soon got worn out. This went on for nine hours. I was in severe pain for most of the ride. To make matters worse, I was only carrying a small water bottle with me. The others were packed away. When I tried drinking, the horse began galloping and all the water splashed out. It was 95 degrees on the trail. A forest fire burnt off most of the tree branches a dozen years ago, so there was almost no shade. I began suffering from dehydration and heat exhaustion. Come on, horsey. I would never have attempted this trip had I known how painful this horse ride would be. I am sure if my horse walked at a steady pace, it would have been a much easier ride. After nine hours and 24 miles, I was finally dropped off near the confluence of Donahur and Young's Creek, where the South Fork Flathead River officially begins. The next morning, I was so sore from the horse ride I could barely move. I decided to go fishing anyways. I was going to use a large streamer to try and entice a big bull trout and fish a smaller streamer behind to maybe catch a smaller cutthroat. These would be cast with a six weight custom spin fly rod. Get me a fish. One. This guy is really fighting hard. He hit the little Matuka. Little Matuka streamer. Ah, 14 inches is pretty nice. When you're out on the river, you encounter a lot of solitude, but you won't be alone. Each day, about a half dozen people would float by in personal rafts. I was told that between mid-June to mid-July, it gets truly crowded out here with float fishermen, wade anglers, mule trains, and hikers causing some congestion. The day ended with a truly heartbreaking incident. I hooked a cutthroat trout that was a trophy of a lifetime, 20 to 24 inches, but it got off. That guy was, he was 20 inches, maybe 24. He was big, really big. The hook came out, I don't know what happened. 
So disappointing. On day three, I was still terribly sore from the horse ride, so I figured I would fish the nearby Young's Creek. On this medium sized stream, I was fishing a seven and a half foot four weight custom spin fly rod with a nymph and a woolly worm. Bull trout may be found in the South Fork tributaries, but you are not allowed to target them. There were a lot of good spots here and the action was great, but my luck was not. Oh, he got away! That's a big one. That's a real big one. Oh, it's a big one. Just a big daddy. Ah! He got off again! That's seven fish in a row. He was big. Oh, he's running. Oh, it's a big one. It's a real big one. Ah! It's eight fish in a row that got off. I am not happy. I am not happy. I got another one. I'm holy cow. I got another one on. It just hit my nymph. Look at that. There's tons of fish here. Ah! It's nine fish. Nine fish got off. What the heck? I lost nine fish in a row. I am not happy. I am not happy. This is not good. Nine fish. Nine fish got away. In a row! I had them on my line! I sharpened my hooks three times. Three times with a diamond hook sharpener. And they still get off. After changing my flies, I began having more success landing fish. Finally! After losing nine fish, I catch one. Chase them in this rocky water, it's too slippery. Yes! Finally! I got a fish! Finally! I hooked, fought, and lost 11. I fished a lot of places, and I have to say, Young's Creek might very well be one of the best trout streams in this country. It's also one of the most difficult to reach. Ooh, got one! Got him! It's the 13th fish to have gotten off today. The 13th fish. 13 I hooked, I fought, and I lost. 13. That's not fair. You're cheating. That's such a bad number. It had been a good but very frustrating day.
On day four, I decided to hike a ways up the trail and fish nearby Donaher Creek. The trail runs nearby the stream, but there's usually a cliff preventing you from getting down from the trail. So unless you're going to fish at the confluence, you have to hike at least two miles upstream. Because I was still so sore from the horse ride, it took me two hours to hike a mere two miles. I fished with spinning gear on this day, hoping to have better luck landing fish than during the previous two days when I was fly fishing. spinning rod. Really warm. To fish this wall effectively, I used a floating hookless crankbait for casting weight, which does not spook the fish like a bobber does, with a trailing dry fly followed by a nymph. As you can see, that combination worked pretty good. This guy's really big. He's still got the little nymph in his mouth. If you look carefully, you can see my number 18 pheasant tail nymph in the lower jaw and a much larger nymph in the upper jaw that the fish apparently broke the line from another angler. In case you're wondering where I got that spinning rod from, that's actually the fly rod I was using the previous day. It is a custom made spin fly rod, 7.5 foot 4 weight that can fish either a fly reel or a spinning reel with equal effectiveness. Got him. It's basically two rods in one. On this day, almost all the fish were hitting the little pheasant tail nymph. They were ignoring the dry fly. Must be big, he's really fighting hard. He is big. He is a big one. Oh! Got him! That is one nice fish. 14 inches, pretty nice. Oh, he's headed downstream. He's taking me for a ride. Okay, fishy, I'll, I'll follow you. This is one energetic fish. I think I hooked him in the dorsal fin. That's why he's fighting so hard. Come in the side. 
Got him. I was highly impressed with Donaher Creek and would say it offers fishing almost as good as Young's Creek. Four days after my horse ride from hell, I finally started to feel better. So I took a hike a few miles downstream to South Fork. On these excursions away from my base camp, I bring both a lunch and a dinner. None of my food requires any cooking. I have protein powder for breakfast, protein bars for lunch and dinner, some cereal, crackers, cookies, and plenty of fudge. After my difficulty landing fish on a fly rod the other day, I decided to use a spinning reel on my six weight spin fly rod. A large spoon and a large streamer would be used to try and entice a big bull trout or a trophy cutthroat. Instead, I ended up catching a bunch of little cutthroats. Oh, got me a little cutthroat. Look at that. Earlier in the season, when the water is higher, most people supposedly float in larger rafts that could hold several people. By late July, everyone is in smaller single person rafts, but almost everyone still travels in groups of two or three. Many consider a solo trip so far in the wilderness as too risky. On the other hand, when you go by yourself, you get a much larger dose of solitude. On the sixth day, it was time to relocate my base camp further downstream. With nine days worth of food remaining, my backpack was 50% over the maximum recommended weight. My backpack is a little too big and heavy. Keep in mind that I'm also carrying fishing gear and camera equipment. But that was only half the problem. With a persistent heat wave, temperature on the trail was reaching 100 degrees. It was exhausting just to sit down. Despite the trailside refreshments, I could only manage three and a half miles this day. And yes, I trained extensively for this trip. On the seventh day, I took it easy and fished nearby Gordon Creek. This little stream is known for good action on cutthroat up to 12 inches. Nice little cutthroat on the dry fly. There is a major trail following the stream, and so it does get a bit of fishing pressure. And by the way, the haze you sometimes see in the background is due to forest fires in nearby states. See that fish? It's huge! The pheasant tail nymph was not effective this day, but the fish really liked my number 16 black ant.
Господи, нет, где мы? I'd say he's about two feet long. What's that over there? Is that a small bull trout? And there's a little smaller one. It is illegal to target bull trout in the South Fork tributaries, but I could still catch them on film. I estimated these two bull trout to be 24 and 20 inches long. On the eighth day, I resumed fishing the South Fork flathead in hopes of a bull trout or trophy cutthroat. Nice 13 inch cutthroat on the zonker. There he goes. Despite the hot weather, I never saw the water exceed 65 degrees. It's a lot cooler by the river than it is on the trail, but it still gets plenty hot. About every 20 minutes, I'll dip my hat in the water to stay cool. When you have a hat as large as I do, this is like air conditioning. On the ninth day, it is once again time to move further downstream. With my pack a little lighter, I was hoping to hike 10 miles to the White River. It would be another hot day, but my map showed several small streams crossing the trail. To reduce weight, I only brought enough water to reach the next stream. The Prairie Work Center is the headquarters for trail maintenance out here. A ranger warned me the small streams might be dried up, so he gave me some extra water. If that hadn't happened, I would have been in serious trouble. The 100 degree heat was oppressive, and with my heavy backpack slowing me down, it was looking like I'd be running out of water and succumbing to exhaustion. With four miles remaining to reach the White River, I left my backpack behind and hiked ahead to get some extra water. <coughs> I then had to hike four miles back in the dark. Fed up with backpacking in the heat, I waited the next day until the cool evening came and then hiked the remaining four miles to the White River. It was a big disappointment for me as this was the last day of bow trout season 
and I had failed to catch a bull trout. The White River is a beautiful and unusual tributary of the South Fork Flathead. Everything is kind of white, and the water is gin clear. I assume with such clear water, the trout would be hard to catch. As you will see, the action was really good. cutthroat on the pheasant tail. Even the fish are white in the stream. Most of the fish you will encounter here will be not more than 12 inches, but I am sure there's an occasional larger one in the deeper holes. Green is on its way. My plan for the next day was to hike 11 miles, then fish for a day, and then hike 11 more miles and be out. To do that, I would have to hike at a faster pace than what I had been doing. Unfortunately, the trail was not so level out here, and hiking was tough. Look at that, a heart-shaped rock on the trail. At least there were plenty of water sources along the way. I also noticed that downstream of the White River, the number of anglers I saw began to increase. I was wondering if that red helicopter kept coming back to rescue people. For the 13th day, I had planned to be fishing the South Fork, but because I fell 4 miles short of my 11 mile goal, I would have to continue hiking. I only had enough food for 2 days, and I was getting a little concerned that I might not make it out before my food ran out. The South Fork now looked a bit larger than before, and paths from the main trail to the river would periodically appear. Other anglers continued to become more common.
There are plenty of water sources and even some trailside appetizers. From this cliff, I was able to spot a huge bull trout of about 30 inches. It came to the surface, perhaps to chase a fish, and then disappeared into the depths. Downstream of Helen Creek, the trail finally gets close to the main river. It was my last day in the wilderness. With just seven miles left to go to the trailhead, I could see a lot more anglers, boaters, and hikers. In this one stretch of river, I counted four rafts. The water sources were abundant. I bet there was a big bull trout in this pool. While my backpack may have become lighter, I had lost 10 pounds and carrying it was becoming painful. I had arranged for Ovando shuttles to relocate my vehicle from the Pyramid Peak Trailhead to the Meadow Creek Trailhead. I was never so glad to see my Jeep. They prop up the hoods like that to discourage pack rats from taking up residence inside. This is how the Meadow Creek Trailhead looks. And that was my trip in the great Bob Marshall Wilderness. <laughs>